Well, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. I'm chatting with Claude Berthume Sensei, Seventh Don Shihan, Chief Instructor of Aikido de la Montagne in Montreal, Canada. He's also a member of the United States Aikido Federation Technical Committee. Bienvenue, Sensei. Merci. <laughs> so, uh, peut-être on commence un petit peu en français, mais comment allez-vous? Ça fait longtemps que je, je vous vais, uh, ça fait, je vais vous aller en uh, décembre, en winter camp. Ça, c'est la dernière fois. Oui, ça Qu'est-ce qui se passe? <laughs> Moi, ça va très bien. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um, what's going on? Um, you know, we're in the first quarter of 2000. 21, and uh, are you guys seeing any light at the end of the tunnel in terms of being able to train? Well, now the vaccine is uh, coming, you know, so we hope that, you know, if there's not too much like those, uh, those other, the other stuff of the COVID coming, you know, the, so I think that, I don't know, man, I'm thinking maybe September we should be able to reopen, I hope. But now we do like a Zoom. I do Zoom classes uh, four times a week, and uh, from my house. Now I put the tamis in my uh, in my living room, and I <laughs> the house is uh, <laughs> the couch is, is uh, <laughs> you know we moved everything. <laughs> but uh, I think that was the best way. You know, I like those little mats, but after a while on the knees, it's a <laughs> little tough. So so now we thought, okay, if we we there for a long time, better bring some mats. So that's what we did. And uh, the dojo is closed <clears throat> because we have a, I, I don't know how you say that, uh, you know, at eight o'clock we have, everybody has to be home so we can uh, go outside. So if the class would stop at 7.30 in the dojo, then uh, I don't have time to come back home. Right. So, so uh, feu in, in French, in English, I don't remember how you say that. Yeah, uh, I just, I know the word and I just forgot it, but it's uh, curfew basically. Uh, Okay. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, Those are different cities that have different, you know, U.S. is so big, as is Canada, and I'm sure there's some different yeah. things that happen across different cities, too, in your country. But, um, yeah, it's quite different across this country, to be honest. Yeah, in Quebec, we are the, the only province with the curfew. Mm-hmm. That's the, uh, the other places, they don't do that. But here we do it, and since then, it went down, you know. We had, like... Uh, 2,000 something cases per day. Now it's down to 600 something. Wow. Uh, it's just the variant, the variant, variation of the COVID that we're afraid of that might, you know, that might bring everything up again. And, uh, but uh, I think everybody is stuck with that and we have to take the good part of it, not, the, not to think only of the bad, uh, bad part. Yeah. What I wanted to ask you was, you know, I think, you know, you, you, by the way, your congratulations, this is your 50th year in Aikido, if I look, yeah, your bio's right, yeah. correct, yeah. Yeah, I started in March, in March 71. Wow, that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, my teacher celebrated 50 years last year, and anybody that's in that yeah. realm of, of training is just, it's amazing. Yeah, so congratulations on that. He, who would have thought that your 50th year you'd be teaching Zoom classes, right? <laughs> <Not Aikido. enough. laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you is, you know, you know, I've talked to a lot of different uh, teachers, a lot of different seniors in, in, out there in the USAF. And, you know, we, 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 all, we all have students that <clears throat> if it's Zoom, if it's minus 10, if it's train on ice, if it's train in the dining room with a living with a table, they're going to show up and train. But I'm sure you've seen some people fall off that uh, because they can't come to the dojo and do, you know, regular Aikido training. What kind of message can you share with people that just to stay connected to the dojo and stay connected to any aspect of the training and all aspects of Aikido? Well, I have some students that don't train in Zoom. That's right. They don't like that, but they still pay their dues. They still, you know, we contact, we keep contact once in a while. And uh, I think that's important. But what I would say to the everyone, try to stay in shape. Because when we're going to start back, it's going to be, you know, people, have, they will have to be very careful not to go too fast because your head remember, but your body <laughs> had a time to forget, you know. So yeah. just do a little, you know, try to stay in good shape, but don't 
you know, don't put, uh, you know, too much weight on that thing. It's going to be too, too rough after to take, uh, take away, you know. Yeah, that's a great point. What are you do, guys doing in your dojo uh, as a dojo, you know, from your leadership or what are people doing on their own other than watching their diet? What are they doing for exercise to keep, you know, the cardiovascular up and the, you know, the core training that we see in Aikido from, you know, getting up and down and, and training? Yeah. In the in the, the dojo, I think some people, they, they do some kind of a jogging or stuff like that, but uh I do a, a lot of uh, bicycles, stationary bicycle. My wife does jogging. She, and uh, you know, that's how I try to keep in uh, good shape. And uh, I think it's important. On day one, when it started, I thought, oh, you know, I had injuries in the past, and I know that when you, you know, sometimes you have to be careful not to lose your, uh, you know, your uh, good uh, physical condition. So yeah. yeah think about it every every day you know don't think oh when i'm gonna come back i i I'm gonna start again so try to you know to get a little more uh, uh how you say uh i don't know but minded i think on that you know so but but i guess everybody has his own own way you know that uh you can run and up and down the stairs in your house or house yeah. <laughs> That's a good come and, and, and get you to the hospital after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we're doing actually, and I think I've shared this online, is I saw a, a school in Singapore put together like a very a small Tabata workout, which I know you have a background in uh, as a phys, physical education yeah. teacher. Yeah, physical education, yeah. Yeah. So like I think like you said, any exercise is great, right? Something, move your body. But um, I'm trying to do things that simulate you know, nage and uke. And, yeah. you know, if you, I think running is good. I mean, cardiovascular and lifting weights is good, but if you can do something that is more of a hit up and down and fast, yeah. slow, fast, slow, I think, I think when we come back, it won't feel like we're uh, rokukus, yeah. uh, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. When, um, you, when the dojo was open or we can, I could go by myself with my wife, then at the end of classes, we would train together, you know, a little, just do like, yeah. We start the first week, we do 10 back rolls, 10 side rolls, 10 front rolls, and uh, throwing like that. Then the second week, 12, 12, 12, and 14, 14. 14. So you go slowly and, uh, you know, you don't hurt too much your body. Yeah. So, uh, quand est-ce que vous avez su que Aikido uh, uh, was going to be your future, votre avenir, votre choix de la vie? Well, I was uh, 17 years old when uh, when I started, and uh, um, I, I just stopped playing hockey, you know. I was uh, playing hockey here. It's very popular. And uh, at, uh, at uh, springtime, then I, I wanted to do something. I thought about judo or taekwondo. My brother was doing taekwondo, so I thought maybe I'll go in that or judo. And one morning... I, I look at the newspaper and I saw a little article with a little picture about this big. <laughs> and I saw the article on the side and it was the guy was talking about Aikido. And when I saw that, I said, that's what I want to do, you know. And uh, I went to see my father. He was downstairs and I asked him, could you bring me over there? Because they, we have the inscription today and I want to start on Monday. So I started on that Monday in March 71. and. Uh, I, since then, uh, it's uh, six, seven days a week. <laughs> but what, like, you know, you start out as a student, you, you probably didn't start out and say, I'm going to be a full-time Aikido teacher or grow no, a school. No, no. So what, at what point did you, did you say, well, I think I want to do this for my life? Yeah. Well, to teach uh, Aikido is, uh, well, I had that kind of no choice, you know, after a while I had uh, my instructor, not my first instructor. My first instructor stopped after one year, and uh, I went with his instructor. And uh, after nine years, you know, he was. We had some, uh, you know, conflict. You know, with uh, the way he was going, the way I was wanted to do things. I wanted to follow more Kanai Sensei and Yamada Sensei, and uh, and uh, so there was. We had a little. Uh, we were not on the same uh, same uh, line, okay? So at one night, uh, 
I, I told him, you know, I think I, I want to leave the dojo. So I shook his hand. I thanked him for everything he did for me. You know, I really appreciated it. Then uh, I left and I didn't know where I was going. You know, I thought I'm going to open a dojo, but I, I was teaching at that time at university. And uh, for, uh, I, I taught for already there's nine years, I taught, you know. So, uh, so him, when I left, was in 83, so that was 12 years. And uh, then after that, I looked for a space and I, op I opened uh, a new dojo. The guy at university told me, if you want to have more hours, you could. I said, yes, but when, if one day you want to, to cancel the program, the Aikido program, then I, I'm going to be, you know, empty hands. So I, I told him I'd like to open my own private place. And that's what I did. And uh, that was not easy, but I had no choice. And, but I never thought, you know, I would, I would start teaching all around like I, I, I'm doing now. I, I had a dojo, then I remember in, uh, I think it was in 83, 83, Yamada Sensei told me, he said, if you want, you know, I'll bring you to Europe. So he brought me, you know, he paid for the, uh, the hotel was paid, the, the flight was paid, and uh, he took care of me, and uh, I was there, and uh, that was the first trip. Then in 80, I don't remember the dates exactly, but uh, he brought me, same thing in the, uh, in the, um, south america so that's how i met people you know by traveling like this i was i was doing for uh, 20 years i was doing between uh, an average about 20 seminars a year and uh, when i sometimes you know it was in europe and the next week you were in the west coast of the united states and uh, i had all my stuff prepared and that's all i was doing i was at my job when i was a phys ed teacher I was not working full time for a while because I had no time, you know, I would go like 80% and uh, because I travel and they let me go like that. So for many years. Wow. So, That's amazing. Yeah. Then after that, it started, people start to invite me to teach and uh, I asked uh, Yamada Sensei and Kanai Sensei if it was okay. They say, yes, of course. And uh, that start started. Wow. So, um, that's kind of, you know, I've heard similar stories with some of your peers on the technical committee as well. But like, what do you foresee the next generation? You know, as, as uh, you know, what, what can you pro or project or predict COVID aside? Because I think we'll come back eventually to normal. But what do you think is going to be the future of Aikido as um, the generations follow? Well, now there's a, for the young generation, up when I started, there was not so many uh, dojos, you know. Now there's dojos everywhere. There's seminars, you know. You, you look at the USAF web, website, you're going to have like six, seven, ten seminars in one weekend. Right. You know? And uh, so um, so it, it might be harder, you know, for people to go out and teach. At the same time, it's a good opportunity too because there's more dojos, so you could be – more more uh, people that invite each other and uh, you could share what you learn and uh, but after a while i think there's a you know it cannot be like 30 seminars in the weekend and uh, you know if they're close to each other's but i think that you know i think that uh, aikido now is much more developed than in our time and i think that the young generation you know if they push and if they they're very serious they they can they can uh, have a great time in that too, you know. That's what I, I hope for my students to have as much fun that I had in Aikido and I still have, then, then uh, that's what I want for them. You know? Yeah. What, um, so what is like one of your fondest memories, um, you know, from a seminar, like a specific seminar? Because it's probably hard to, to put them all together. There's been thousands probably for you at this point, but – I know Kanai Sensei was a pretty big influence oh, yeah. uh, on you, but like, do you, you want, would you like to share a story uh, training with Kanai Sensei that's maybe uh, in the archives? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, with Kanai Sensei, that was, that was always like, uh, I remember when we were at summer camp and he was, he was going all around and uh, then he would start yelling, Aikido is a martial art, Aikido is not dancing, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, when he started to, I remember I was first you, I think, and he told me, he said, you know, he said, you should sit in front. He said, then I can take you for Ukemi. I was second or first Q, you know, so that's, then I went and then he started to take me for UK and uh, that's how it started. And, wow. But to, to do that, you know, then I start following him everywhere he was going. And uh, that was in uh, 83. I started travel with him, you know, until he died in two, uh, 2004. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, no, that, that I had a great time with seminars, you know, that uh, and going everywhere with him. You learn so much because he would give a class in, uh, in one place and the weekend after he would do the same class. So after a while, you know, you, you, you learn more the techniques like that. It's, it's much easier and uh, yeah. get the explanation and you train with different people. So that, that's why it's so important to go to seminar, I think, to, to get, you know, you, you try, you know, you practice with your friends, you're going to fall down, you know, after, you know, you look at him sometime and he's falling down because you know what's coming up. But uh, when you practice with people that you don't know, you're more focused and, uh, and uh, you have more time, more uh, possibilities to develop your technique. I think. Yeah, he was fascinating. I, I had limited ex exposure uh, to him just about four years because I started in 2000. And, you know, he'd teach at summer camp and just this dynamic ball of energy just you know with these big extensions and then the hair would flip back and he'd you know he'd set back I mean everybody knows what I'm talking about but I'll I'll yeah I mean the weekend he passed away I tested for Shodan so that's you yeah. know Yamada Sensei was supposed to be in Cincinnati and he had to go to funeral for Kanai Sensei oh, yeah. but um what what I was what I wanted to ask you was like and I think you've said this before on either on video or an interview how you don't really like try to become a clone of your teacher, but you, your, your Aikido develops with the influences that you've had. So yeah. like I, what I love about taking your class it, it very unique and different from every senior teacher is the precision in which you explain each specific move, each specific Tai Sabaki and where to put your hand and how to do this and where to end up there. No one explains it like you do. And you're explaining these advanced, I think they're advanced, Oyawaza, Kanai Sensei, you know, Sumiyatoshi, you know, Makiyatoshi stuff that's not Kihon Waza. And I just, I find that fascinating um, how many techniques you guys, because he had a name for every technique, right? Essentially. Yeah, most of that, you know, but yeah. like, he's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just find that very, uh, very interesting. That's one of the things I remember when I take your class is that you're, you're very, like I use the word precision. It's yeah. very precise. Each I, piece. I, I try to do that, but I remember can I sense it was sometimes you would say, well, I, I'm thinking about techniques, you know? So he was technique and uh, thinking like sometimes you, one time I remember he said, I want to know, you know, that the thumb is the only finger that can opposite to the other one. And he, he said, I must think why, you know, what can I do with that, you know? And one, that, that was a big influence for me, you know? And one time when I took my sandan, after that, I went to see him and I asked him, Sensei, what I should work on? He said, get organized. And uh, I said, okay, just say, get organized. He would not tell you, do this, do this, do that, you know? But uh, can I, Sensei, I think was an artist, uh, very good, you know, he, he would uh, draw very well. He would make swords and stuff like that. So, and, uh, and I think he gave us tools, you know, he, he didn't, he was not there to say, do this way, do this way, do this way. But he gave me, I think, tools like to his other students too. And uh, so I tried to do something with that, not, not trying to copy him because I don't have the same body shape. I don't have the same background. I don't have this, the same experience he had. So I think it's important to develop yourself, you know. And uh, he told me after the six down, he told me, he said, now he said, you can do whatever you want, you know. You don't have to follow me and do, and do what I'm doing, you know. But to me, I, of course, this is what I wanted to do. But it was a way, I think, to say, you know, you should be free to to express yourself, not to 
to try just look at my video. Oh, he did. He moved a little finger. I moved a little finger yeah. because it doesn't make sense, you know, because he moved his little finger maybe because he needed it, but maybe you don't, you need to move the three fingers to do what he was doing. Right. And one other influence I had was in the circus school because I went, uh, you know, I'm teaching circus also like juggling and oh, wow. just ba basic, you know, I'm not a circus artist. But when you go at the National Circus School in Montreal, they're very precise, you know, and they, they, they take a movement and they, they, you, you need to, to see how it works, you know. And I love to do that, you know. When, if I see a beginner having problem doing a, a, a fall, you know, just tumbling or whatever, then I, I love to, to look at it and say, ah, oh, it's because of this, you know, you, you, you need to put, you know, maybe you, you should fix that, fix that, fix this, and that, that should help. And I think that's, a, that, that's I, I like to do that, you know, teach beginners and watch what they're doing and try to bring them up like that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, too. I think that uh, reflects on the, what your teaching style that we, we love because uh, everybody's unique and different even the way they teach Aikido, right? Even your peers. So we just, we're so lucky in the USAF to have such a, just a vast experience uh, of high level instructors with different backgrounds. Um, I want to end with, because you're, you have a very strong weapons background as well. Aiki weapons, influence, Iido, sword, Joe, Oken. Um, so clearly that's been the emphasis, right? For a year for all of us is developing, uh, you know, Kata and, and what we can do on our own for, for those that really need to be, you know, quarantined, if you will. So what have you seen or what recommendations do you have for people that will help them now with, with their weapons practice so uh, that will ultimately help them once they get back on the map? Well, I think you should train now. You should keep training. I teach classes like the Aikido classes. We do a warm-up. We do some footwork. Then we do weapons. And uh, we can do now. We did the... Uh, uh, Joe Kata is like uh, 9, 11, 14, 23, 31, 35 Joe Kata with uh, the counterparts. We did the uh, Boken. We, and uh, and uh, in Yaido, sometimes I have 15 people from, uh, from Yaido. We have students that started in the COVID, during the COVID. It's going to be one year. They're training four times a week in the, in the, on the Zoom. And they do pretty good. But I think the only thing is, you know, even if you don't have a, much space, you, you could just a, a little stick, you know, just to have something in your hand, then just do the move, the footwork, try to remember, you know, you, you don't need a Joe to do a Joe Kata, you know. <laughs> you can do it like this. And uh, sometimes I go to sleep and I, I try to remember, I revise all the – Joe Kata, then, you know, you bomb, bomb. So just that, I think it's a good exercise. And uh, but of course, uh, when you do Kumi Jo, you, you, you have the, you know, you don't have the partner, but you, you can at least do the opposite side. You, you can do both sides. Then after that, you know, it's better than nobody. I know it's, uh, you know, I think it's better that than nothing. And of course, it's not the same feeling or the, but that's all I think you can do if you want to keep that. Yeah. Um, well, I want to thank you for spending some time today. Je vous remercie pour votre temps. Do you have anything you want to share in French to any of your French students that are watching? I, I think I will contact them soon. I think that everyone has to try to keep the form, to keep the smile, because... Que... La pandémie va finir un jour, mais nous, on ne sera pas fini. Puis il faut essayer de, de garder le bon côté. You know, you need to, to try to keep the good side of it. You know, sometimes I, went, I was hurt uh, during my training, and, uh, but I, I cannot, you know, I had a bad arm, but I learned to fall without using too much my arms. And, you know, you, you always try to, to find something in, uh, in, you know, otherwise it's uh, boring. And <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you again. It was nice to see you today. It's been too long. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the, the first seminar we can come back to. I hope and, to um, <laughs> yeah, 
and take care. Wish you wish your wife the best and the rest of your dojo. And uh, we'll talk soon. Same to you. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs>